Alright guys, so we're out here today testing some 140 grain Barnes TTSX bullets with Hybrid 100V Hodgson powder and Federal Gold Medal Match Large Rifle Primers and 280 Ackley Improved Nozzler Brass. So today we're just doing a seating test or seating depth test. We're pushing 25 thousandths at a time, getting closer and closer to the lands. Just going to see what it groups like with kind of a mild charge of powder and I put one group on paper and it's already looking like things are going to be pretty decent so hopefully we will see some some pretty good groups today but I'm not really going so much for velocity but we will be measuring velocity with the chronograph just to get an idea of whether or not we may potentially be seeing pressure signs if we're getting a little too close to the lands or something along those lines so don't expect to see any issues but just in case like I said we got the chronograph out here just for extra data but it's sitting out like maybe I don't know, 10 feet in front of the muzzle Got a Liberty Suppressors Infinity X Suppressor on here, Trigicon Credo 2.5 to 15 power scope, which I'm really beginning to like a lot actually. The Savage 110 Ultralight and 280 Ackley Improved, and some worn, can't remember exactly what kind of rings they are, but they're worn uh, 30 millimeter rings. So, anyway, let's go ahead and get shooting. This is going to be the second group here. I'll put the data on the screen or something because I actually lost my card out of the box here, so I don't have the data sitting right in front of me but we're shooting the shortest loads to the longest load so this will be the second shortest one that we have here So far I'm pretty happy with this. I'm not um, real like in tune with shooting this gun yet because I haven't had it very long and this is actually some of the first rounds I've put through it. I, I did enough to what I felt was comfortable in terms of breaking in the gun and uh, getting the cleaning regimen kind of figured out and now I'm just I don't have very many 7mm bullets, so I'm really just going off of what I have, and one 140 TTSX is really, uh, probably would be a pretty good hunting bullet for this gun, and something that I'd be comfortable with using in my area. So, we're gonna keep shooting these suckers, and hopefully it'll, it'll uh, tighten up even more at some point. But again, we're not expecting anything huge today, but we just kind of wanted to see what it can do. So anyway, so far... I'm pretty happy with it. I think this thing is going to be a shooter, so let's keep going. Alright, so I forgot to mention on that last group that based on what the chronograph was telling us, we actually had an extreme spread of 22 feet per second and a standard deviation of 9. Well, we're seeing some consistency in the group sizes, and honestly, that makes me more happy than anything, because consistency in the group size and in the velocity, which this one was even tighter than the last, actually. This one's got an extreme spread of 20 feet per second and a standard deviation of 8 feet per second, which is pretty sweet, considering this is literally the first batch of load development that we've done. So, anyway, um, good thing so far. We're going to keep shooting. So I'm sure you guys probably noticed me putting my hand on the barrel earlier and I expect to be made fun of in the comments for that. I, I understand that carbon fiber wrap barrels have their own heat dispersion characteristics, but it's habit. So <laughs> you see me doing stuff like that, it's uh, it's just kind of habit. But we're gonna go ahead and shoot our fourth group here, which like I said, I'll, I'll try to remember to put some uh, seating depth information on the screen for you so you know which one we're shooting.
looking like that's a pretty good group. I'd say that's the best one we shot so far. Heck yeah. So, the velocity data on that one was an extreme spread of 15 feet per second and a standard deviation of 7 feet per second. So, I've used this powder before in other cartridges and had good luck with it, but I haven't used it in this one yet because this cartridge is new to me, but I've always been really interested in the 280 Ackley. And so far, I think we found a, a pretty good little combination, potentially. Um, I'm liking what I'm seeing right now, especially with the, the consistency of the velocity data. And I'm sure whenever we start packing more powder in the case, things are probably gonna change a little bit. But if we're seeing consistency right now to these levels, then we're probably gonna see a good trend of that in the future with uh, more powder. Three more shots, same deal, a little bit longer on the seating depth. We got three more groups to do using this thing between every shot group just to kind of help um, keep the barrel from getting too hot and it seems to be working fairly well. Um, suppressors totally cooled off so everything's good to go. No more Mirage. Gonna go ahead and shoot this group. Um, hopefully we're gonna continue to see some consistency and maybe even some really good groups. And admittedly, I'm kind of having a hard time getting comfortable with, with my bag here and I didn't take anything to raise my bag up just a little bit more. So it's not exactly where I want it, but it's it's getting the job done better than I expected it to. So um, we're gonna just keep going. I don't know if I pulled that one, but I wasn't confident on it, so I'm not going to give a, too much away, but I'm not really sure that wasn't me on that last one. Alright, two more groups. So the extreme spread and standard deviation actually opened up a little bit on that last one, so it may not have just been me, but it wasn't by a huge amount, but it, I mean, compared to the last group, it was like double, so. It's uh, worth noting. Interesting. So, velocity on this one was an extreme spread of 20 and a standard deviation of 8. It's pretty good. So, that could just be chalked up to me. Who knows? Like I said, my bag setups, my bag setup is not that great. I don't really want to blame the gun, but we are doing a seating depth test, and the last two groups did not look that great but one had a lot of vertical dispersion and the other had a lot of horizontal dispersion. I can't really explain that offhand, so it'd be worth looking into. But anyway, we got one more group here. I'm gonna throw the barrel cooler in there back there for a little longer and then we will shoot this last group and call it a day. All right guys, we got three rounds left. This is the final group of the day, so hopefully all will go well. already pretty obvious which seating depth we're going with. All right, well that concludes our seating depth test. That last group was a extreme spread of 22 feet per second and a standard deviation of 9 feet per second. Now, when we load up our full bore hunting loads, these are going to be probably moving quite a bit faster. So, don't expect that to be our final velocity, but the good news is what we did see throughout the entire test was a lot of consistency in the velocity. Most of them were in the single digits, which is great. So whether or not we uh, found the perfect seating depth for a bullet, which I, I definitely know which one I'm going to pick out of this group. I know that the barrel is uh, 
capable of shooting well, and I do know that it's um, consistent. So I, I'm not going to probably clean it before we shoot this next session of load development, but subscribe with notifications if you want to see the optimal charge weight portion of this test, because we're going to do this seating depth test. We did seven groups of three. We Obviously, based on the groups down there, if I'm looking at it right, uh, pretty sure I know which one I'm going to be using in terms of the seating depth. And now that we have our seating depth chosen, we're going to be going up in charge weight with this same powder and all the same components. We're just, we were trying to find our seating depth. Now we got that figured out. So now we're going to test the powder and uh, see where we want to be at with the powder. So consistency and velocity is definitely there. That's great. We have proven that so far. And I think that this rifle is more than capable of shooting exceptionally well provided it's a lightweight hunting rifle with a pretty flimsy stock, admittedly. I'm not real fond of that because there's like almost no room in the barrel channel for, you know, movement. So that I'm not real big on, but you know what? Um, if it can shoot under an inch at 100 yards, this thing, I'm, I'm probably not, in, at least for a long time, not gonna be taken out to shoot really far on any elk or anything like that around here. I, the farthest I can hunt is like 300 yards. So and that's stretching it. Um, anyway, I'm just jabbering at this point. So far, I'm liking the gun. Anyway, that's gonna conclude this video. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, if you got any questions, comments, concerns, let me know. Leave a comment below. Send me a message, whatever works for you. Um, stay risen, take care, and we'll see you on the next video.